started the YouTube feed. That's two weeks in a row now we've had an issue with you YouTube feed. We're going to have to talk to you about that soon. Everybody who's just seeing us coming back up on YouTube, hi guys. Uh, sorry about that. The uh, feed just wouldn't load. It froze and hung and hung and hung. So let me reintroduce myself. Again, it's Craig Axe here from Weed Maps in Irvine, California. If it was 420 for you three minutes ago, I hope you lit them because we were already doing that over on Facebook. Um, I don't understand why Weed Maps, uh, sorry, not Weed Maps. Weed Maps is great. Uh, YouTube apparently has been fucking around the last couple of weeks on I me. Mean, I'm going to have a little chat with them. Mm. Anyway, we're here. We're doing it. We've got um, the recap. All the others are Facebook. Bear with me. Um, we're at Weed Maps. We've got Gil from Weed Maps. We've got Weed from Nameless Genetics. And we've got Weed from Wonder Brett. Okay, going to be the big show. So now you guys on YouTube are now caught up with what we've missed on Facebook thus far. Otherwise, we're now seamless. And uh, sorry about that. I don't really know exactly why that happened. It's all right. We're doing it. We're making it go. Like we say, the fun of live TV. Um, right. Going to be a big one. Uh, shout out to the chat room. Thanks to Jay Chronic. Thanks to Raul Gash. Hey, Tice Anderson. Hey, be damned. Uh, clearest picture on Pot TV ever? Well, thank you very much, man. It's because we're probably using my laptop instead of the broadcast one. Uh, what's up, no one? What's up, Killer BG? What's up, everybody? Again, sorry I was late. I don't know. It looked like it was going for a second, and then it just... And then we continue. Um, this week... Like I said, smoking a bunch of weed, I'm going to go roll up some more because if I'm not rolling a joint or smoking a joint or doing a little bit of both, there must be something wrong with me. Uh, plus, I've also got some cool looking weed to put in the na in the bud cam. This week, uh, first one I'm going to start with is the guys from Nameless Genetics, a California-based company here. They've got some very fine products, and if you are in and around the area, make sure you check them out, namelessgenetics.com, also namelessgenetics underscore on Instagram, and Nameless Genetics on Twitter, just to confuse it. I bet there was a shutdown at one point, and they probably all match someday. Um, of course, you can also find them, oddly enough, and probably not that surprisingly, weedmaps.com. Yeah, yeah, and also on the Weed Maps app. So good to have them supporting everybody, the community getting together, making it happen. Um, we're going to check out, let me see, the uh, the Mega, no, the Mega Glue and the Nectarine from them today. I've got the Nectarine here first in a cool little funky container. I'm going to go ahead and make that go in the bud cam, see what they say about this one. You know, it's funny that my first guest who's going to come up is known for his strain reviews, so he'll probably know what people actually say. But they say about the uh, product I'm about to put in here, put it in focus. Uh, ooh, that looks pretty good. So far, this Cali Chronic has been pretty good. I can't lie. Um, Fancer Dan, we know a thing or two about Bud, but yep, 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 been good. Mm. Oh, that looks delicious. Okay, uh, they say, if I will, the Nectarine is a sativa-dominant hybrid with beautiful hints of purple and bright green hue, complemented by a generous amount of orange hairs that coat the nugs. Seems to be what we're seeing thus far. A powerfully pungent yet fruity finish gives this particular strain a beautiful and balanced aroma, while producing a very happy and motivational effect. It still packs a punch, which gives its users a well-balanced cannabinoid combo, great for daytime use, and it's happy high. So rather than smoking a heavy indica to start the show for a while, it's going to be a novel switch, smoking something a little bit lighter, but I think it looks good. I'm going to put the piece in the bud cam. I'm going to smoke that up right now and then bring in my first guest on the show, if you will. Uh, finally, uh, as you guys have seen me, I've been plugging this for a while. Thanks for putting up with me on social. I've been pretty excited to come on down here. Um, you look back to 2015, I had uh, Miss Courtney Dabswell from uh, Weed Maps was on when we were in Toronto for the Extract Zen event, and that was pretty cool. But now they've invited me to their house and welcomed me with open arms. It's been great. I came in here literally yesterday, got a whole tour of the facility, found a place that had a whole room full of products that I may or may not have helped myself to. I mean, I'm just saying, don't tell security. And um, it's looking good, feeling good, sounding good, and doing good. So I'm really happy to be a part of it. We're going to uh, tear this place up. Um, but for those of you who don't know about Weed Maps, since its founding in 2008, Weed Maps has been the largest medical, mar or largest not American medical, blah, 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 the largest marijuana technology company in the world, as well as the leading medical and recreational marijuana locating service. See, that's where I was getting to. Uh, if you're searching for a retail or a medical marijuana dispensary, Weed Maps is the simplest, most reliable way to find what you need. Look up your local dispensaries and check out updated menu items for available medication, marijuana strains, edibles, tinctures, concentrates, and any marijuana-related product, and nearby daily deals, which is always important, discounts, and exclusive offers. Uh, Weed Maps owns an operates marijuana.com and Weed Maps TV, 
as we see, thanks for letting us take over the studio, uh, giving users comprehensive access to information on relevant news, in elephant news as well, uh, entertainment and products in the industry. You can download the Weed Maps app on iOS and Android, of course, and check out weedmaps.com. And as I said, we've got the lovely and talented Gil in the house with us today, which is kind of a big deal. Pulling the man out of out of his office is a hard is a hard task. Once he gets hunkered in there, he's, he's dedicated. He's in there. He's grinding away. He's doing dabs. Uh, one of the founding members of Weed Maps. Uh, the creator of the largest commercial cannabis photography team in the world, uh, Gil Mora, or Mota, depending if you look him up on Facebook, maybe. Uh, his work has led to interviews with the biggest names in the business and a serious case of the munchies. Uh, from strange showcases, tech and product reviews, to how-to videos, tutorials, covers of the marijuana industry events, weed skits, and more, Weed Maps channel designed for the seasoned toker and can of curious. Uh, whether you're an experienced smoker or new to the world of, world of weed, prefer sativa or indica, flower oils, Gil and Weed Maps TV bring you closer to the cannabis culture and cannabis community. And to that effect, let's bring him closer to us, ladies and gentlemen, from Weed Maps TV in his own studio. Greg, Gil. nice to see you. You too, man. Welcome Thanks to HQ. Having... Man, it's great being here. I Thanks. come bearing more gifts. Mm, mm, <laughs> an ashtray. Yes. My kingdom for an ashtray. Uh, sorry to anybody from around here in case you got to meet a little too late. Uh, thanks for having me, man. Thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. It is a pleasure mm, and a bit of an honor. You, uh, you've you been doing this a little longer than I have. And you, amongst a couple other folks who we know from particularly some of the pot TV crowd, um, uh, were pretty inspirational in folks like myself trying to come up on for what we're trying to make happen, being pot press and marijuana media. And if it wasn't for folks like you and Weedmap TV, we wouldn't be able to be here. So awesome. thank you very much. Uh, I, love to, I love to hear that. Uh, you know, somebody's got to be the foundation of the pioneers, right? I'm, I'm just glad it's taken off the way it has, honestly. It's, you know, it's gotten huge. Weed is a, it's a thing. It is. And you are, <laughs> no, technically, you hold the title of Community Outreach Director here at, at Weed Maps, do you not? We have a hard time figuring out what my title really is, but I've gone by that for a while. I don't know if that's the best description of what I do these days. Yeah, I mean, most people know you as a host of, of Weed Maps TV is really sure. how you're best known. Absolutely, for sure. Yeah, outwardly so, yes. And uh, so then to that, I mean, let's speak to the history of it. How did the Weed Maps TV, or even to that as one of the founding members, how did Weed Maps come about, really? Uh, Weed Maps started when Justin Hartfield, uh, who came up with the idea for Weed Maps, went to a dispensary one day, had that magical experience that we all have the first time we go into a dispensary, seeing all of these choices and having options and and he walked out going, man, I want to know where every one of these things is. I want to know where every dispensary in the world is, and I want everybody to be able to find them too. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. And that's pretty much the, the theory behind weed maps. We're essentially trying to show everybody where, where the weed is. And that's a really handy feature because a lot of people look for weed whenever they can. And Absolutely. especially when you go like out of town and you're traveling around the world or whatever, one of the first things I do uh, is always, okay, where am I going to get some weed? And usually it's you go to the hotel and you talk to the bellman or the bartender or the ballet or the somebody like that and say, hey, look, where can I use this medical card from Canada? You gotta Canada? find dudes. Or you gotta know the guy. You gotta find dude. Right? Dude's out there. He's out there. You gotta find dude. So now you guys are bringing dude to you or letting you find dude if you want to find him. Absolutely. Nice. Trying to make it easy for, for safe access. I mean, that's... That's where it's at. Well, I mean, if we wouldn't have been unfairly uh, uh, criminalized and uh, misled for 90-some years, we wouldn't be living in this area of needing to be in the shadows and coming out. Everyone would just know. We would be at every corner store like cigarettes and coffee and all the other things that are way more harmful for you. And in some places, it's it's turning into that. Yeah, right. And that's awesome. There's still a lot of work to do. There's a lot of places they'll still lock you in a box for for taking part in uh, taking uh Taking part in, in cannabis. That's it's it's, it's horrible. Right? Speaking of taking part, can I? Um, you know, I am actually in the middle of a tolerance break. I'm way on the far side of it. Thank you. Uh, so because I want it. Oh my god, I'm like I'm, I'm probably going to get contact high being around all the smoke because I haven't smoked for 24 days. Uh, that's Art, some that's some breaking news right there. Uh, well, Art, I, I actually talked about it a little bit on my Facebook page. Mm -hmm. uh, if you search for Gil Mota, you'll see uh, what I what I post there on Facebook, and I, I post a lot of my personal personal stuff there on, on some level. Um, 
But yeah, we've got a staff doctor, Bonnie Goldstein, and actually two years ago she told me I should probably take a, a 28-day tolerance break. Totally ignored her advice. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Doc, for not. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm just being being real. I, I yeah. totally ignored her advice. But uh, this year, I, you know, I've been I've been dabbing basically for a number of years in a row, and I I wake up in the morning and I hit. You know, I hit dabs like from the time I wake up until the time I go to bed. I wake up in the middle of the night. I'm like, oh, Christ, I need a dab. dab in the middle of the night. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So I'm actually looking forward to being able to get super blazed off of just a joint. You know, that's going to be a novel experience. It's going to really take me back to my roots. Yeah. And uh, I'm looking forward to that, man. I did uh, over the weekend a judging of the Canadian Fire Bowl judges kit, and myself and a guy by the name of Dabberman nice. sat down in four hours, blazed uh, eight joints and 23 dabs each. Nice. Uh, but it's for for work, man. Yeah, I mean it's that's serious business. That's professional, but, right? I yeah, had yeah. had to do it. You got to do what you got to do, do for work. And people were quite like, "Oh my god!" At the end of it, how are you still standing? And we're like. What do you mean? I'm in the exact same shape as when you got here. I'm going to go smoke a joint and yeah. finish what I got to do here. Yeah, totally. Uh, so I, I think I could probably use one of those as well, but there's that whole um, wanting to kill everyone else on the planet that for yeah. the first 27 of those days, that's going to be a problem, I think, to me. I was actually surprised when I posted about taking a tolerance break on Facebook. A lot of people uh, came out to support me on that level. A lot of liking going on. A lot of loves. A lot of loves going Little hearts, on. Hearts, and, hearts, hearts, hearts. Uh, a lot of people sharing their own tolerance break experience. So it kind of warmed my heart to know I'm not the only one feeling this major fucking pain. <laughs> well, also at the start of the year as well, too, it's, you know, a lot of people, if they're going to make a move, this is the time where they've done it. So there's probably a few people. Actually, I could have sworn I heard somebody else in the studio was on a similar break to you, yes, I guess, on yes. the same cleanse. Not like on the same exact tolerance break schedule. That's awesome. Yeah. I uh, Well, I can respect that. I mean, I think people understand and appreciate the tolerance break, especially for someone of yours to hatcher, because let's face it, for people... People like you and I who've been smoking weed 25 or more years and a half ounce a day or better, you get to the point where it's, well, it's the taste is good and the feel is good, but I'm not really high like I used to be. Yeah, it doesn't get you high the same way. Mm -hmm. you, get, you get really used to, used to being high and uh, being not high starts to get kind of weird, kind of funky. So then I'm going to have to ask you, have you ever <laughs> smoked this, uh, this nectarine before from, uh, the, uh, from the Nameless Genetics guys? No, I've actually smoked a number of their flavors, but I have not smoked that one. Those guys, they do some really good work. This, this has a very fruity flavor. I would almost... I can smell it. it yeah, smells it smells very nice. Yeah, like almost orangey, but I mean, nectarine would... Yeah, that's what it is. There's definitely some citrus going on in the air here. Well, I hate to torment you, man. No, but it's sorry. cool. You roll me one so I can just kick back with it. Yeah, here. here you would... just hold this for a second and I'll oh, roll man, you one. now you're real <laughs> killing me. This is rough. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, this is the closest I've been to weed in a second. Here, well, I've also uh, I've also got some more from them coming up, so we'll go ahead and I see there's nugs all over the place here. We've got some. Well, this is the next one. This is the um, that one's pretty. This is nice. This is the mega glue, I believe, and I've heard great things about this. Uh, they say the if I will, and then of course. He's like, well, that's maybe not true because you know as well as I do, strain reviews on the websites for the most part are kind of comical at yeah, best. Yeah, I mean, it, de it depends on who, who's mm -hmm. writing them and what it's all about. But yeah, it, it, sometimes it's a little bit advertising. Well, and also I think part of the problem is too, a lot of the time the final product comes down to the person growing it. You can have the best genetics in the world and fuck that up and you can have bag swag seeds and come out and grow something brilliant if yeah, you know what you're yeah, doing. Absolutely. So sometimes the descriptions always don't match. So I get a little bit comical of what, well, what they say and then there's what we say is right. the idea, right? right. So. So they say the Mega Glue, which, uh, which I'm about to roll up here, features amazingly dense nugs, extra tight and great structure, which, which it looks. Its coloring is vibrant lime green, which it is, and I'm going to put it in the bud cam so you guys can see it instead of me just holding it here. Um, oh my goodness, that is pretty. Brought to you today by the fine folks at, uh, nope, not that one. Nameless Genetics, checking that one out in the bud cam there. My, oh my, I like. What do you think, friend? Yeah, it looks really nice to me. Right? right? Ah, I like that. Oh, turn this around, see if we can another... Oh, good Sparkly, Lord. sparkly. Shiny me like sparkles. Uh, let me see. Aromatically, it's healthy. It's a very earthy and bright sour note. The flavor is extremely satisfying, having both a sweet and sour taste that lingers on the palate. The hit provides a clean cough and leads to instant and heavy physical relaxation. Couch lock is definitely a side effect of this strain. This must be a mix of their Mega Wellness OG and... Gotta Gorilla, be Gorilla Glue? Glue? Gotta be. That's, that was, would I, uh, I'm not familiar with their Mega Wellness OG. It's pretty but, nice. 
but I am familiar with the Gorilla Glues in general, so that was my sort of guesstimate on that one. I'm going to roll that up while you hold that one for me, um, and we continue on, man. Um, so you've done all the shows. You've done about 100,000 episodes, you know, millions and millions of Lots views. of smoking weed. Lots on of smoking weed. TV, lots of going out to events and checking out what's going on in the community. Yeah, you've been doing it for a while. I mean, you started with... Okay, what was? Do you remember the first video you did on Weed Maps TV? Yeah, first video. It wasn't even Weed Maps TV back in the day. It was Nug Porn videos. And, okay. Uh, and that's why the, the channel isn't Weed Maps TV. It's Nug Porn. Oh yeah, um, if you read the top part of it, that's yeah, right. Sure, sure, sure. We can't change it. Damn it, YouTube! Will you let us change it, please? That's the third strike on you this week, YouTube. Please. Uh, anyway, um, so for now it's Nug Porn, and uh, in, indicative of beautiful weed. <laughs> so I found myself in places where I was basically taking pictures of weed all day and then I'd be stuck in a hotel all night. I don't go out to bars. I don't drink. So I was like trying to find things to do with my, my night times basically. And I got this camera. All of a sudden it made video. I was like, oh man, maybe I need to make some videos with this thing. And uh, you know, I was meeting some really neat people doing some really cool work and I wanted to kind of put some focus on that. that you know, some of these people who used to, you know, wrap their faces in bandanas and take pictures with their bitch and weed. Yeah. You know, these these people they take their bandanas off and they're just normal people and they're good people and they they shouldn't have to be like wearing bandanas over their faces like they're bandits. And I I tried to kind of get people who you wouldn't necessarily see normally and make it so you could see them. So the first time I ever sat down was with a grower from uh, a dispensary that I think actually still exists, although it's uh, owned by a different owner now, uh, called uh, uh, Denver Relief out off of Broadway in, in Denver, Colorado. And uh, sat down with their then grower, Adam, oh. and uh, talked about the weed he grew. And we sat there and pretty sure we smoked on, on this bong right here. And <laughs> yeah, that bong's gotten <laughs> some tension. It's like the traveling gnome all over yeah, the world, right? Yeah, and, uh, yeah, that's kind of the, the start of it and how it all all came to fruition, I guess. And, and since then, I've talked to a ton of people uh, about what they do and and uh, tried to bring it to, to you folks out there. Live and, on Weed Maps TV. Yeah, well, just I know there would, there would be interest in it. You know, I knew yeah. people would be interested to see what it was all about. I knew I was interested. I knew there had to be other people that would be as well. Well, and I think the proof positive here we are all these years later. People still tuning in. I got people in the chat room going, hang on, wait. Who is this? Wait. Um, no, wait. Uh, what TV? What network? What am I What am I watching? What? Yes. <laughs> this is Craig X from Expert Joints and Cannabis Cultures Pot TV on Weed Map TV Studios with Gil from Weed Map TV. Yes, we are messing you up all those people are smoking weed not sure what's going on you're right and yes gil isn't gil isn't smoking that joint yeah i'm just babysitting this just holding it while i roll this one that he can hold and babysit well until i need to roll that one as well too um tolerance break you know i should have come next week definitely i should have come in february you should come back next week uh, i wouldn't mind man i yeah. honestly i wouldn't mind coming back fairly often as long as WestJet gets their head out of their ass on the next flight yeah, I just want it to be known out there that even though I'm on a tolerance break, I'm still an amazing dab caddy. We we were getting laid out, man. He came into the we were in the fishbowl earlier getting prepped for the show, and he came in and gave me the dab sweats. I ain't even in the front. We're sitting there, <laughs> and he's like, "You good?" I'm like, "Yeah." And it's straight up, man. I, just got a little hot in here. Woo, that was a fat one, man, and that was good too. I can't even front. I'm not mad at that. For a second, I was like, "Oh my god, what do he do?" I'm like. I don't know, but you should thank him for it. <laughs> so, most people, you son of a bitch. I mean, oh, thank you very much. I uh, appreciate that. You're a good guy. What a host for the most. Telling you with kindness. That's right. And what a way, what a way to go. Yeah, right. What a way to go. <laughs> the first person who ever died from weed was because he was too happy from all the weed yeah. that he got. Still hasn't killed anybody, but yeah, but we're trying, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Boy, I'm going to give it a shot anyway. Um, so yeah, man. So you've gone on to interview a million people, do a million reviews. Uh, can I ask maybe some of your favorite events and or favorite people you've talked to without uh, like, you know, putting yeah, anybody on blast? Yeah, for but. sure. I got, my favorite weed events of the past have been... Uh, Honestly, we've got this golf tournament that we've taken part in uh, a number of years, and I'm pretty sure we still take part on some level at the Clinic Colorado. Uh, great, great dispensary chain out there in Colorado. What would you roll up here? That's the uh, that is the mega mm, glue. Tastes good. Right. Mm -hmm. mm. And and of course, you know me. I did manage to to get some uh, smoking masters down here, man. You know I like those silvers. I called ahead too and made sure I was prepared. So, so they put on a 
a golf tournament at the clinic in Colorado, and uh, the proceeds go to the Multiple Sclerosis Society, and every year the amount that they donate to the MS Society grows. And I mean, I think the year before last it was over a hundred thousand dollars. It's really the event itself. The, I guess the reason I like it is number one, it's for an amazing cause, and then uh, number two, the the participation level is amazing. It's super, super fun. I love to golf on a personal level, so sure. I, it's great to just get you know the community out there on a golf course. It's kind of fun. And then, you know, if you if you drink beer, they've got these cart carts that all they do is run around and make sure everybody has beer, and then they also make sure you have joints. So if you smoke weed like I do, you will not go without joints if you play in the like tournament. That. I like that. Super fun. Um, so yeah, if you get a chance and you're in Colorado, I believe it's in August, uh, look up the clinic Colorado and, and check out that event. It's for a great cause. It's like four, $420 for the foursome usually or something in that Not range. surprised to hear that, that that is the figure on it. Yeah. Okay. And, and what's really cool is at the end of the year, uh, Denver Post puts out some kind of an article uh, about the biggest donations that come from like corporates or whatever and sure. they're always in the top 10 with really big companies i'm talking about like you know boeing and shit <laughs> it's, su it's super cool to see a dispensary up in that list as uh basically doing good for the community so uh, it's just all, all around it's a, a great a great event yeah well we've seen the amount of funds that cannabis can raise for taxes and whatnot and i mean the community does come together every year in vancouver we put on the 420 rally and it's no joke it's big. There's a lot of people who come out there, 50,000 or more a lot of years. And that's really all put together by local sponsors, weed companies from around the way, uh, local mom and pops. You know, obviously some organizations come out a little bit larger too, but buying three, 400 booths and go hanging down to the beach to be able to fund yeah, the big TV screens and everything that comes with it, right? That so, sounds like my kind of place. Right, well, you come on up and visit us in Vansterdam. I, you guys have been gracious hosts to me here. I'd love to come by you, show you the not quite as impressive pop TV studios, but we'd be happy to have you. So, um, Because, yeah, I mean, let's face it. People know you from, the, I was going to call up the Weed Maps TV on the YouTube. Make sure you go check that, by the way. Get them back on there. Haven't seen as many videos from you as of late. Are you uh, spending a little bit too much time fishing these days, or what's your yeah, probably too much time fishing and golfing, and we've got we're you know we're getting into brave new territories now with Weed Maps TV. We're we're we've got a, a surf team, yeah. We've got a skate team, yeah. we've got an esports team, and we're trying to sort of put focus on these these new verticals that we're yeah. kind of going into. And uh, I don't know if, how many surfers you got out there. We just won a really big. Our surf team won a really big contest out on the North Shore, our pretty much our first time out, and. Uh, it was called the Dahui Backdoor Shootout. It's a really big surf contest out of Pipeline. Right. It's really cool to see Surfline talking about weed maps. It's really neat. Hmm. I, uh, I like the way you're getting into the community. We're actually going to talk a little bit more as the show goes on here about some of those initiatives. Uh, I, I like the fact that you guys are getting involved with the community and really putting yourselves out there and trying to help with the normalization Absolutely. of this plant that is incredibly normal. It's although it's a wonderful, miraculous, most alien thing. There's nothing else quite like it on the planet. It's not that big a fucking deal. And I think the more you guys associate with you know, some of the athletes and some of the esports games and all these new and emerging, well, not necessarily the new and emerging, but these industries that are getting a lot of attention right now, uh, to be able to be involved with them and give people access to information they need. And there's a lot of tie-ins, and I can understand why. As again, we'll talk as the show goes on. But it's not just about getting high and playing video games or getting high and going skateboarding. And all Which is also fun. Which some people like to do. Yeah. And hobbies go together, mm -hmm. like apple and pie. Honestly. Peanut butter and jelly. Something like that. Yeah, nachos and cheese. Mm. I like it. Um, and of course, yeah, as you were talking about, the marijuana.com is something else. Another thing that you've been associated with that, and that goes quite hand in hand with you, and I'm going to pull the website up, and the Weed Maps group. I mean, a little bit more about that. It's a news site, if you will, right? Absolutely. Right. So you can go check out marijuana.com. Looks a little bit similar on the template of my site. Wow. Ah, hey, what's going on here? No, uh, full of news stories, articles, information that you can get. I, I like it, man. I, uh, I think that it's, it's a good look for you and for Weed Maps TV to be going to continue because strain reviews are cool and how to roll joint interviews are, or tutorials are cool and interviews are good, but there's a lot more to the community out there. And Absolutely. there's only so much that can be done from inside a studio. 
Right. And the community is growing too. So the needs of the community are changing. Uh, there's all, I'll always try to somehow help facilitate the core cannabis hardcore users. Yeah. Like those are the, those are my people. I mean, you know, yeah. I'm, uh, you know, I understand like wanting to see like dabs melt and want to see oh, real shit, shots yeah. and want to get that. Like, sexy. I, it's super awesome glass. And that's, that's, yeah. that's, that's, I love it. You know, yeah. on a personal level, I love all that. For sure. So it's nice to see though, that like we're trying to also make it. So if somebody who's not as necessarily hardcore into cannabis and cannabis culture can kind of like see what it's about uh, and can kind of get some content also that is geared more towards like the news side of things sure. and like activism and, and well, things that are, mm -hmm. are not necessarily hardcore cannabis. Well, even you know? medical information. And, I mean, look at the implosion, uh, explosion of uh, CBDs and oh, now nice. the, the medical side of coming. We got, you know, the baby boomers, you know, a third of prescriptions go away. And, you know, we're seeing the change of the, the new folks who are coming to the cannabis market. And it's really, it's not just the 15-year-old kids who found a joint in their fucking older brother's bedroom or something like that and started like so many other people their first time smoking weed or something like that. It's a lot of folks who are coming back into the market or from outside are learning that, hey, I didn't know that weed could do that. And I, I want to do that too now. And so it's good to see you guys spreading out there and incorporating more people. And again, giving more people access to the information to make their own choices. Right? Absolutely. Uh, so then uh, you... Uh, you also have dabbled a little bit over the years too. You got a bit of a green thumb, do you not? I've seen some products on your strain reviews. I enjoy growing. I love to grow weed. I have for a long time. I'm not, I'm not the best grower. A lot of growers out there, are the best grower ever. You should check out my weed. Yeah, that's not me. <laughs> I'm not the best grower ever. I'm a soul grower. I do it because I, I love the the short length of of the the cycle. It's really nice to be able to see something that just starts out so cute and little and like just next thing you know it's blossoming into this beautiful beautiful plant and I, I i love how cannabis flowers i love the the shape the smell i'd love to just be in my room with it i was gonna say is there anything you can, can you say it on live tv is, is there anything in a room somewhere that you're working on these days uh, right or? now no i've actually got one of my really good friends has got a bunch of clones for me so uh he's gonna come over i think this weekend and i think from the gonna, 29th and celebrate i and think we might mess around yeah. in my room a little bit but yeah. there hasn't been anything i've just got a little too lighter it's not not anything huge and this is completely legal for me here in oh, california cool, to do cool. it so. all right that's awesome yeah man so then what are your plans for 2017 be fly besides you know flying some drones and, and chasing some marlins um that's a good question i may actually reboot the strain showcase show on some level well that'd be great that's big news uh, yeah i might come back and smoke some weed on weed maps tv yeah it's been a second since i did that and i miss it so i think there's a good chance we may start to use the set for smoking maybe some weed sparked a little something here today <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's sweating he's just like shaking uh, <laughs> i know i hate to do it <laughs> no, if i would have known i would have scheduled a week no, later we're, I swear. We're, no, we're super cool man. Like, I, it's this it's like tolerance break out of nowhere for me it was kind of yeah yeah well that's all good at least it wasn't an imposed one no it started with me being sick is how i like i was sick so it's like easy for me when i've got like the flu or whatever to not smoke weed because yeah. it doesn't really even feel good at that point yeah. i'm just like yeah, if you get a bad enough head cold or something yeah, like that you yeah, barely want to so um I just kind of like, I guess, filter it off that way and was like, oh, the doctor, she told me I need to, <laughs> maybe I'll just keep doing this for a second. And uh, it was it was weird because at first it was easy and then it got hard. Yeah. And it got really hard. Yeah. <laughs> and there's been a couple moments that have been really rough, uh, but it's, it's okay. You lock yourself made, in the house I'll, for a month. A I'll weekend. tell you what though, I've taken a leave a lot. Like, you know, they talk about weed being good for pain relief and I'm mad for sure because yeah. I've taken more leave in the last month than I've taken probably in the last three, four years. I don't doubt it. Like, man. No bullshit. It's kind of jacked up. Yeah, honestly. it's, it's surprising to see the difference when you've taken it. I mean, I've had some times where I've, I haven't taken a deliberate tolerance break, but there's been a couple of times where I've been traveling somewhere and I haven't been able to get weed for a day or two. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm oh, in that's the a fucking rough hotel tolerance room, break. Man. Yeah, that's, that's rough. I can't sleep. I'm sweating. I'm here. Don't fucking talk to me, you piece of shit. So you know what I'm saying about being yeah. maybe a little uppity. Yeah. Maybe a little uppity. Well, when I quit smoking <laughs> cigarettes, I did the weed method. 
Me too. What happened was I my my routine what was. What year did you quit? Uh, I quit in 2004, June Good 8. For you, 2001 here. Cold turkey. Cheers. Nice. Me too, man. Nice, man. So I was ready for it. Use one of these. Right. Times so 11 to million. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my whole routine was I'd have a joint and I'd have a cigarette, and that was just was the routine. Just and then I went from you know like a pack and a half of the heaviest and king sizeiest to the smaller and lighter and less you know down to one point I was smoking lights or extra lights and like it was a pack was lasting two two or three days something like that and went on a Sunday night after my after joint cigarette before bed speaking of which I kind of want to like that one now. yeah please um, it uh, I had like two drags into a smoke and I was just like it's fucking gross man it's not feeling this one and I was like Ugh. and I went walking to bed I'm like I wonder how long I can go without a cigarette tomorrow and every time I wanted a cigarette for about the next week I would just smoke a joint and then I would really want a cigarette so I would smoke a joint and then I would either really, really want a cigarette and smoke a joint, or be so high I'd forget about it for a minute, or my throat would start to get sore to distract me for a few minutes. So for about the first 10 days or so, I was in a mostly a weed coma, smoking about a quarter to a half ounce a day, which at that point was a little bit was was a reasonable amount for me. Uh, and now that's kind of like breakfast. Um, we smoke that on the show generally a lot of the time, depending on who's the guest. But it worked like a charm. Within a month, I was like, Ew, get that shit away from me. I had no inclinations, and I've never had a drag again, thanks to. It starts to smell different after you've been away from yeah, it for a does, second. Man. It really does. Yeah. About once a year, I'll be sitting there and just be like, oh, a cigarette would be so, oh, so yeah. gross, actually. Yeah, right? what, was, what was I thinking? <laughs> yeah. Like, you just get like yeah. that one yeah. literally second and a half of cool. Oh, that's not cool. Um, well, okay, man. So you've been working for Weed Maps from the get-go. You know, you've been around. You've been pioneering on the weed TV. You've been doing the you've been doing the weed growing, the weed smoking, the weed reviews, the weed events. Weed, 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 weed. So your life is weed. But... It all started somewhere, which is why we got to ask everybody, just like you, in the favorite four questions of the week with you, with Gil this week, which is kind of cool. How and when did Gil get into weed? What's the story of how you discovered the, your fondness for the plant? Um, I first, I guess, the first time I ever smoked was in eighth grade. And the guy I smoked with, like oddly enough, is now a neurosurgeon, so there you go. didn't mess with his future at all. See. Um, Mine could be argued. <laughs> Weed map saved my life. I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna say that. Right. I'll come out and say that right now. Nice. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, eighth grade was when I first first smoked. I guess I was probably 13, 14 years old. So I was a kid, mm -hmm. straight up. I was a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't really start smoking weed regularly until I was in high school. So uh, I used to play music. I used to love getting high and playing music. Uh, Still love getting high and playing. Music. Yeah, there's nothing never changed. <laughs> they it. said I grow out of it. Boy, were they yeah. wrong. But anyway, no, um, you just have to grow everything else around it. That's, yeah. that's, that's how you do it. <laughs> that's how you do it. But uh, yeah, that's. I mean, I grew up in California, uh, Southern California, kind of by the beach. The weed was there. You know? so that's just a junior thing for junior high or middle school. Uh, it was. Yeah, it yeah. was just around. It's part of the California culture. Cannabis is here in California and I was lucky enough to know some people who grew some decent weed. I also encountered a lot of BC bud back when I was growing up. We had the skunk. We would, every once in a while we'd get that chocolate tie. That Where's the sticker? There's if I could be find, if I could find chocolate here. tie today the way that we had it back then, holy shit, it would be awesome. Because it, it doesn't exist. It's just not around. Man, if anybody would have it, it might be the Temple of Calyx, which you can check out the newly insta uh, reinstated Instagram, Temple of Calyx. I'm a homeboy, class in session. Al the Alchemist from the Wednesday show. You saw him yesterday sitting here at the Pot TV studio. Um, he might. They yeah, might. Some chocolate tie? If anybody's going to have it, it would probably be that man. It was the weirdest something. stuff because it was super brown, it was super lanky, mm -hmm. super sticky, but it had this weird sweet smell. It was a fun the funkiest sweet smell, and I have not smelled it since. I was like a teenager. Mm. And if I smelled it again, I would be right back. I mean, I would know it the second Let's I Let's get this man it. some chocolate tie, then we're going to break <laughs> this. Like just, I haven't, yeah. I mean, I want to go to Thailand and see if that's, you know, I don't even know. I mean, back then, like, who, who knows what it was? You know what I mean? Well, it could have been anything. And then, yeah, like we come down to, as we said earlier in the show, it was the dude who, yeah, or, totally. or, or, young, or lady, whoever yeah. it was, it was the dude yeah, yeah. who who grew that. Yeah. And really, that's what it came down to. So I'm sure if they had some other strains, that you probably would have enjoyed their particular variety, take on those too, in theory. So, uh, all right, well, that's cool. Uh, and when you are blazing, are you a, a dab guy, a blunt guy, a, a joint guy? What is your preferred method of consumption? Uh, these days, dabs, for sure. Yeah. The quality of oil has gotten 
pretty amazing oh. over the last couple of years. The um, fuck damn did you give me earlier, man? That uh, shit was like that was some hardcore OG West Coast Cure. I met that dude in the in the in the lab here earlier yesterday. Cool, cool. Uh, that shouts to them, man. I wouldn't mind chopping it up, man. Those West Coast Cure guys yeah. seem proper, man. Yeah, they're good, good, good folks. Make some nice, nice oil, right? For sure. I, I like OG. That's like my favorite strain. So I mean, I'll I'll pretty much smoke anyone's OG, and uh, as long as it's well done, I'm. I'm, you know, I ain't a hater, so as long as it's well done, I'm okay. Well, when you come to Vancouver, we'll take you to uh, the Liberty Farms. We'll get you some of Chad Jackets, uh, Liberty, uh, sorry, the Lindsay OG from the Liberty Farms uh, yes. collective out there. They, uh, that man kills it. That stuff he goes up against, you know, a couple few dozen entries or a couple hundred entries that put in, you know, five or six or ten or twelve into the contest each. He puts in one, wins first. You know, that's, yeah, nice. that's that guy. Nice. So up up where you're where you're from, what's like the popular strains up there? Is OG super popular up there, like it is down here? In I don't think it's Los Angeles area. Well, okay, so everybody everybody likes it, but it's gotten to the point where yeah, yeah, it's another OG Kush. Because okay. I think in some degrees, not everybody does it as well as you guys typically do it down here. We've it's a little bit different temperatures and growing cycle we got to do virtually everything we do indoors right and it's it's a definitely definitely a different dynamic and there's a little bit more stealth to it and so um <clears throat> we have a few other varieties right now you know, you've got the super lemon hazes are big right now of course the gorilla glues and the blue dreams and all that anything that's it's been fairly popular uh jack is making a, a little bit of a resurgence nice. as well too nice. um <clears throat> the tangies are big uh the god's green crack or the god bud they're killing it right Right now, everybody's uh, everybody's terp nerding these days up okay. there, right? Okay, so, good. okay, that's good. And, and the dab culture is is getting off the charts, man. I mean, there's some. Guys. You guys are all about that sublimator up there. Oh man, shouts to Enrico and the subby. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We uh, we've. I'm dying to get him on the show, but he's a Pot TV regular. Everybody knows Enrico from Sublimator, man. What's up, Pot TV? What's up, Subculture? What's up, Enrico? So uh, make sure you come on through and see us again. Uh, he's a great guy, and uh, yeah, is. that's I, a hell of a product, man. I've had a chance to, to hang out and smoke with him on his Sublimator, and uh, every time I see him in Spain, I like gravitate towards him because he speaks English, and <laughs> I do not speak Spanish very well. So he it's is. nice to talk with someone who speaks fluent English right. when you've been in Spain for two weeks. Right. For the, any uh, Weed Maps <laughs> fans from, from America, who are unfamiliar with the sublimator it's kind of like a vaporizer meets like an e-nail meets like a you know bimolecular gasification and it's it's essentially like a vaporizer but it hits like a bong like or a dab rig or whatever you want it's just mind-numbingly effective you get the flavor out of it the experience of it and it like chambers like a hookah if you want it to it's just one of the most effective smoking devices there is they're not uh, the most uh, inexpensive device on the market but man you typically get really what you pay for on them now they've got new ad adapters and new additions and so make sure you check out the sublimator uh, on Instagram and sublimator.ca I believe is that supported Rico and of course make sure weedmaps.com and I believe it's uh, nugporn420 on Instagram is it not nugporn420 so you're taking it back to what it was yeah, to, yeah. and so it all starts so okay so then moving on the third question if I can ask you so when you're not on a tolerance break my friend um, how much much uh, do you smoke, or did you smoke? Right? I, Are you I, all day, every day, or I mean, like? Yeah, I, yeah. I dab pretty regularly, so um, just. But I can obviously go without if I, you know, don't need to be smoking for a meeting or something. If mm -hmm. I'm going to be offensive with my torch, I can just hang out. And so I can. Yeah, it's not no. like I'm going to be like, oh my god. So I guess that's one of the great things about weed, you know, being <coughs> super into weed is it's not like super controlling of you you can kind of do your thing yeah yeah around yeah. your schedule and just pull that weed into your life whenever you want it that's kind of nice 100 percent. sometimes you can't quite pull it in when you want it when you're, when you're on the plane <laughs> yeah well and that person annoying <laughs> next to you is annoying the fuck out of you well, i see people now like oh check me out i'm smoking my fucking pen on the plane i'm like oh, please don't do that Please. I, making okay, look bad okay so maybe I did that like six years ago when I was one of the first people to have a weed pen on a plane, and I was like, "Is this gonna work or not?" Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. I said maybe, maybe I did, but this was long before, and it was just a picture I sent to my friend. I'm like, "Can you believe I got away with that? That was crazy." Um, it's cool that you can get away with it, though. I mean, on the real, it is well, cool. It, it, it's possible to get away with it these days. They recommend that you don't, and they call it out. And e-cigarettes as well, too. Yeah, they they yeah. very clearly uh, make that uh, well known. I, 
I, I, oh, I you're gambling on some level, but oh hell yeah, some of us are gamblers. Well, yeah, no, it was. Uh, I was honestly, it was, it was really before the whole E thing caught along. I had them seven, eight years ago as people starting to hand me the hey, check this out, and they were coming over. They didn't work very well, but we we're trying to find various right. levels of, of viscosities of oil, and it was mostly what was effectively RSO was going in them, and then diluted to things, and then the various glycerins and shit, and and trying to find a mixture that would kind of start to work and units that could handle it. Technology, right? And then of course it went solid from there. But yeah, I had one that was actually, hey, this one's not that bad. And I took it to show a friend of mine, and I didn't even really realize that I was going to go and think about it. It went through no problem. And I was like, okay, I'm, I wonder if the... And I was just like, just a little one. I just like, and I kind of blew it in my shirt. And I was like, I took a little picture hold and I sent it to a friend of mine. I was like, I can't believe that. And anyway, now, of course, you know, big fucking whoop. I mean, it's sort of the what you do to try and hide it now, but it is what it is. I don't recommend it, of course, but I may or may not have tried it once. Uh, of course, follow your safety regulations, please. <laughs> Listen to the TSA, please. We'll keep it low, one of the two. Yeah, right? <laughs> fucking smart about it, goddamn. Uh, and then uh, when you look back, now this would be tough. And this is why I, I know it will be tough for you to probably call it hope, but out of all of the bags, and you've seen a lot of bags, the one, there has to be one <laughs> that stands out as the most memorable. If you look back, like, fuck. I was this one bag, and I'll never forget it, and I would like to have it back. And that's why we call it the one that got away. What is it for Mr. Gill? Okay. Well, honestly, I, the one that got away, I would like to try that chocolate tie. Everything else I can get again. So, <laughs> I mean. <laughs> chocolate tie? Hey, that's cool, man. <laughs> but, you know, when it was like you had to go to Dude, and it, you didn't have a bunch of choices, and you were kind of stuck with what Dude had. Yep. It was wet or it was dry. Uh, you know, once, <laughs> once in a while, I would get that OG flavor through. And I knew even back, it wasn't called OG, it was just yeah. called like, it was like the Dank or it was, yeah, you know, yeah. Crip or whatever you want to call it. Like, you know, back then it was like Dank or Crip, <laughs> pretty right, much. Right. So uh, whenever that particular flavor would come through Dude's place, I, you know, I'd pick up my quarter ounce or whatever and take it home. I'd smoke it and be like, oh, that's, that's, it. that's, that's it. Call him back. Call Dude back and be like, Dude. I'll take it off. <laughs> I want some more of that. And he'd be like, bro. <laughs> It's already gone. <laughs> so like that was the bag I most wanted mm -hmm. to like get mm -hmm. back. Or, you know what I mean? It was like I get you. I just want my OG 100% of the time, like I can have now. I think some of it is uh, it's obviously of course the strain as well too. But there is a certain nose and a certain taste and a. Uh, to me, it's a kefi, it's the crystal, it's the hashy. There's a something that clean, good burning. I can you give me a hundred jars down, and I'll go. And I can pick out every one, and I promise you, every one of them will burn white, they'll burn clean, they'll be flavorful, because they all have a particular, when weed is done right, no matter what strain, indica, sativa, anything, there's a particular sort of dankness, or a particular kind of, I find, I call it You can tell, after a right? while, you can tell. Right? Your nose knows when it's not full of bullshit. Well, so. you can see, I mean, oh. at some point, like, when you've seen enough bad... <laughs> And enough yeah. good, you start to be able to tell yeah. a little bit of the difference. Well, sure. that I like said, that. testing is still the way to go. Yeah, I was you want to know for sure, like what you're getting, and and what's better, better even than that is knowing that if something that isn't in the stock now, if you know what the test results were, you can find something else on the shelf that's got like the same kind of numbers and know that oh, that's probably going to work for me on some level. Yeah, you get a it's better understanding of the profiles, science, but it's but yeah, exactly. It kind of helps for with sure. The parameters for sure. Yeah, which we can't do just sitting here smoking weed. No, I mean we can tell you how it burns, <laughs> which for in this sure. case has been burning pretty well. Not not completely white, I'll say that, but uh, tasting good. It's been really really flavorful. Been burning very consistently. Uh, really enjoyed it. Um, really really good. Um, I I do get to see a lot of weed where we get to go places, and uh, thus far I've seen some phenomenal products here so far. I've seen some stuff in Vancouver. I think that that isn't as on par. I also think I've seen some things that could rival. I don't think I've necessarily been completely like laid out on my ass, although that tab you gave me <laughs> earlier was pretty serious. And nothing made me sweat like that in some time, man. I admit that. I'm trying to work away. Like, I got work to do. And I'm just... <laughs> um, I had to hit you with the. Yeah, you Is did. it getting hot in here, Tommy? Yeah, it was a little Seems bit. Like a Seems like it's getting on here. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. You want some water? Like, I'm good. He's like, oh, a little bit. Oh. Slap. Anyway, um, brother, I do appreciate that, man, and I do appreciate you coming through, man. It's a pleasure to have you, man. It's a pleasure to get you uh, back here in the uh, in the uh, Weed Maps TV studio with me to be on Pot TV with me. 
doing it up, man. It's a pleasure to have you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks again, Craig. Super, super happy to have you here at HQ. Oh, come on, man. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, and I'm sorry we can't. Uh, next time, I will come back. We're planning on coming back soon. Maybe if I'm lucky, you'll see me on Weed, Weed Maps TV again. Uh, I'll get not, to visit you. Yeah, if not, at the very least, I was going to say, come on up to Pot TV, man. We'll take you through. I'll give you the VIP Vanser Dam experience. Awesome. We'll take you through the tour. We'll give you the whole lay of the land. Love it. uh, it'll be fantastic. Make sure you check him out at uh, Nugporn420, of course, on Instagram. Weed Maps TV, you'll find all of his antics previously there and some new ones to come. Weedmaps.com, of course, support that as well on the uh, apps as well as the websites, as well as the social medias. Um, you guys are everywhere. We've been doing it for a minute, and we thank you. It's because of you that we're doing it here. So awesome. one more time, give it up for Gil. Craig, cheers. Thank you very much. Peace, guys. everyone. Peace out. Mm, on with the show, man. I'm going to keep rolling up some more. Got the got the uh, nameless genetics in here. This was, again, yes, the, uh, the mega glue. It's pretty good. Um, I'm going to have some more guests coming up here. I think they're around. Also, just excuse me, I just got a drink of water here for a second. I believe our next guest, yes, 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 yes. Uh, right, more weed, more him. Ah, let's go right to the next guest. This joint's still burning. Why not? Mm, click to the logo. I got information around here somewhere. His name is in. There it is. Bing. He's not quite sitting there yet, but he will be. Um, my next guest is another of the movers and shakers here at Weed Maps. Uh, from the clothing and retail department, a dope designer, uh, Jeremy Parker grew up skateboarding, painting, and playing music in Southern California. Through his love for design, he decided to buy a broken down Mac computer, fix it, and move up to the mountains and teach himself graphic design. I like that. It's kind of... Reminiscent. Uh, Jeremy started working out as a production assistant for a major skateboard company before leaving the action sports world as global art director for an industry leader. Uh, then Jeremy was designed for a slew. Oh, then sorry. Uh, and since then, that's what it was. Blah, 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 blah. Since then, Jeremy has designed a slew of uh, designed for a slew of brands across the globe, uh, including finding his finally finding his home with Weed Maps family. Please welcome, as I stumble over that introduction anymore, uh, Jeremy Parker to the show. Come on in, brother. What's going on? What's up, man? Good to see you. Good How to see you? you too. You look freshly dressed. I'm, yes, sir. I appreciate you coming through, man. <laughs> I appreciate uh, it. I uh, I know you're a busy guy and you got lots to do. You're uh, uh, one of the many fine folks here working at Weed Mouse. Shout out to everybody from Weed Mouse who's helped us put this on this uh, this week. I kind of came in here like a bomb, blew up, and said, "Hey, uh, excuse me, eh? I'm coming down here from Canada with some maple syrup and some <laughs> beer, eh? And uh, we're going to come down and park my Eskimos outside with the sled dogs." And uh, we want to play some hockey in your uh, in your cafeteria, eh? And uh, they said, sure. Come on in. And they said, do you want some weed? And I said, yeah, of course. And uh, we've been doing it. Um, but I appreciate you coming through, man. I appreciate uh, it. For those a little bit, I mean, let's go ahead. Your background, I mean, designer, all the art. I mean, you're here now, but how did you get here? Where did, it, where did that come from? Well, I started out as the, um, a production designer for a brand called Element Skateboards. Ooh. And uh, during the Bam Margera jackass days, so I was there for the birth of that, which was very fun and exciting. That must have been quite the strange and interesting ride. Oh, it was extremely fun. Yeah. Um, and since then, you know, branched off, done a bunch of different brands throughout that. And my last job was I was the global art director for Volcom Clothing. Oh, cool. And left that position to come over here and run the brand over here at Weed Maps. And you've been doing it quite well over here. Uh, it's uh, it's it's quite nice to see. Didn't uh, didn't you even kind of even touch on the logos and things? And you're like quite the designer, the stylist, if you will, for this brand, are you not? Yes, I'm helping create the brand. Man, that's dope, man. Well, you did fairly well with the other brands, then I guess. So they're happy to have you, and I like what you've done with the place. If I may. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. I uh, thank you, uh, and I like the, the the change in the gear and stuff, going from just the straight branded logo stuff, which is. Which is cool, but now to having some of the new designs that you have, I think I have in here, and oh, you know, <laughs> coincidentally, Boom. like I almost planned it maybe, we do have uh, <laughs> some shots of some of the new uh, apparel stuff from the website yes. that you can yes, find sir. at store.weedmaps.com. Yes, yes, yes. Which I think if we plug here, boom, oh, there it is right there in the text, right? This little part. This little part right there. Um, tell us about the uh, how did this come about the sort of the dressing up of a uh, clothing company because I mean you're a you're a weed company that obviously would make some merchandise for, for product like I do with my expert joint stuff that you want your logo out but you've changed it up and now made it some stylish stuff that people want to wear as well as just want to promote you know what I'm saying yes so basically 
you know, I've, I've always worked in apparel for different brands, mm -hmm. and I just kind of got sick of it. I was a little bit bored, and nothing was exciting me anymore, and always been a marijuana smoker. And Speaking of which. You know what? I'm actually, I'll hold this, but I'm actually on a TB as well as my boy Gil. Day 24 for me as well, which is very hard and probably why I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll pass this back to you so you can take one for me. Um, so basically, reached out to Doug Francis, the man, and he basically said he wanted to start a little apparel brand through hit, through Weed Maps. So cool. I said, I'm your man to do it. So added it onto the to-do list. Yeah. Whipped out the old sketch pad and a couple of crayons and doodled up a couple things and here you are. Right? Yeah, yes, sir. That's a little oversimplified <laughs> there, man. They look great. I uh, I like it. I actually think I've got the ability here, if I'm right, to call up the, what do you know, the website right there. See those pictures? Well, they came from here. And look at some of the gear. Uh, may as well talk through it. So I kind of like this one. Uh, See if I can make that bigger on this cam. It might not do that. Um, I like this one. He's if you can't see it as well. I think we'll have a camera cook here in a second. I got the playback next to me. Uh, it's the one with the holding the the clone, the holding the little baby. Yes, that, the bleed tea. There you go, man. I like that one. That's one of my favorites. Uh, I'm gonna refresh this to go back to now to home start to make the other ones happen. Uh, a lot of cool designs here. Oh, and look at you. Oh, and it's passing the joint back to me. Yeah, yeah I like that. That was pre TB. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody could have told me that these guys, are, we should have come next week. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Come on. The plan for this. Uh, as I'm scrolling through, I see this Sketchy Tanks X Weed Maps, a.k.a. Sketchy Tanks and Weed Maps are collaborations. You want to tell me a little bit about that? Yes. Sketchy Tank is actually a very good friend of mine. Ooh. I worked with him previously at a company called Electric, where we made sunglasses and goggles, and I ran the apparel there. And he was the goggle designer. And he said, you know what, I'm quitting and I'm starting my own thing. And since then, it's taken off. He does very well for himself. And you can find his stuff, sketchytank.com or zoomies.com. You, you know and, what? I'm sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was just going to say, sorry. You know what else you can find? You can find a video of him right here. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> There's a lot of things that have inspired my artistic style, and it's just your know, day-to-day stuff. Uh, coffee, weed, tattoos, beer, conspiracy theories, dicks, dogs, nachos, wave runners, Stephen Avery, all-you-can-eat sushi. I, I mean, I get inspired by tons of stuff every day. My perspective on art has changed. I used to always, as a you know, independent graphic designer and working for other companies, I was always trying to like come up with the next cool idea for all these other people. And then I just had a switch a few years ago of like, you know, fuck that. I'm going to do this for myself and use these ideas for, you know, my own, my own brand. And so far it's been really successful. So I'm going to stay doing that and be true to myself. Probably cliche, but it's not about, you know, becoming a perfect artist. It's about like the road getting there, I guess. It's all learning. I don't think anybody's ever perfect at it. And it's, that's the beauty of it too. It's so subjective. It's getting better, I hope. My favorite part of the creative process probably is the conceptual part of it, where that idea just clicks, you know? Marijuana definitely influences my art and my creative process. It's like a ritual. It's like every time before I sit down and I know I get to do some art, I don't think there's a piece of art I've ever done where I haven't been under the influence of marijuana. Like, these stupid ideas come and maybe one out of ten of them I stick with and it ends up with something I use, yeah. Hi, I'm Sketchy Tank. I'm a father. I am a swamp wizard, I am a beer drinker, and I'm a pot smoker, and I'm an artist. <laughs> Uh, we'll let that run for a minute. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty dope. Uh, I've seen some of the designs. I think I can actually get that back up here on here if I try. But tell me, tell us a little bit about that project, sort of what you guys have done so far and what's next to come as I try and find the pictures. We are looking to expand our featured artist program. You know, with Sketchy Tank, we did a, started out with a few teas. And um, for one of our events, we wrapped a food truck with his artwork. Got a great response to that. And uh, yeah, just trying to support the people out there doing it and following what they're true to. So we're going to do a heavy push with the featured artists as well as 
collaborations with different brands in and outside our industry to keep it going. So yeah. That's really cool, man. I appreciate how uh, Weed Maps is trying to help out the culture and cross over from various different industries. I mean, supporting the local artists. We talked uh, earlier with Gil talking about how they're, you know, supporting some of the action sports athletes and some of the e uh, the e e industries and e sports games as well. Two uh, players as well, two and associations. It's really it's it's a good look, and I like how you guys are getting involved with the uh, the community, if you will. So, is there any upcoming initiatives that we could be watching it for or, or, or at least what's next with the sketchy line um you know what the sketchy tank line was for last season mm. but we're working with new artists well, we're actually working with an artist evil from seventh letter who i'm sure a lot of you are familiar with you can check him out um, we're moving into um, some more cut and sew pieces as well as accessories for both apparel and outside of apparel like grinders and vape pens and different things like oh, that bro. so a lot more to come. Man, there's a lot of things you can be touching on. Uh, we uh, we were actually at one point looking to try and maybe do this from the retail space. You guys have a, a dope little store down in the front lobby here. It's yeah. really, really nice, all glass and logo and clothes, and it's fresh. Uh, but <clears throat> they got smoke detectors are too strong, and they were worried I would set them <laughs> off during the show. So, hey, good for building security, bad right. for a joint rolling show, smoking show, I guess. But that's okay. They had this dope studio to come in, so I was like, ain't no thing. <laughs> Uh, well, man, I really appreciate you coming through and taking it through. So, um, we obviously, where can people get this gear? Um, Store.weedmaps.com right now. And eventually, we're going to have a few retail spaces open up. We're finishing one up in New York City right now, which is going to be amazing. So, oh, pretty excited about that. I, uh, I think that that sounds excellent. And for more information, obviously, they can stay tuned to, of course, uh, weedmaps.com and at the, uh, at the Weed Map social as well, too. Yes, and, sir. and the store. Check it out there, store.weedmaps.com. I like that. Um, well, as you guys, uh, you know, support the next artist, I think people will be uh, excited to see that. Obviously, if you guys ever have anything that you uh, want to show off or we could ever give away to anybody like that, we certainly appreciate oh, absolutely. it. Absolutely. You know, we can, uh, we can maybe look at some sort of collection collaborative type of things like that because we're always down to support the community you know so i say it a lot it's kind of cliched on the show but if we don't support each other we have no support at all and uh so why don't you guys go on and support uh, jeremy's hard work here and go out and buy some of this fabulous clothing so he can be like see see what see how dope my shit is and then they'll be like yeah man cool here's your paycheck this week now get out of my office uh that's fantastic man i really appreciate you coming through cool dude. man thank you so much i appreciate it thank you cheers um Man, I uh, I gotta roll some more weed here in a minute. It's been a, it's been a second uh, since I rolled something. I've been smoking it for a while. I also said there was another company that I was gonna work something with here um, by the name of Wonder Brett, and it's not bread, it's Brett, um, which probably means is somebody by the name of Brett either grows it or owns a company or started the company. Or this is my this is my you know superior deductive reasoning skills. It's the only thing that it could possibly be as far as I'm concerned. Or he lives in a town with something Brett in it, or I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, moving forward, they uh, they have some really nice weed, so I'm going to smoke that. Now, I do understand the wonder part. Um, that's for sure. Uh, this week, I'm going to sample some strawberry bubblegum and Candyland. Thanks to Wonder Brett. Uh, be sure to vet them out at wonderbrettusa.com, as well as wonderbrett underscore on Instagram. And of course, you can find them, oddly enough, on weedmaps.com and of course the Weed Maps app too. Go in there and type in Wonder Brett and you'll find out where you can get their products. Uh, so that's pretty cool. It's a nice feature to have. Uh, that is, of course, if you're the age of 21, nah, uh, and you choose to do so. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and put out this uh, strawberry bubble goo in the bud cam and uh, eh, eh, we'll move a little bit forward. So we were talking about the possibilities of, or sorry, we were talking about what Weed Maps is doing. Oh, oh, chair moved. <laughs> uh, how funny would that be? Man, I hope it doesn't happen though, but that'd be pretty funny. Um, oh, that smells good. That's the Wonder Brett right there. Uh, maybe I should take that off. No, there it is. This one. There you go. That's the Wonder Brett in the uh, in the bud cam. Check them out again. Like I said, of course, at wonderbrettusa.com. Wonderbrett underscore on Instagram. Nice looking bud. That is the strawberry bubblegum. Oh, ooh wee. Um, right. 
so we were talking about the uh, action sports division at one point on the show earlier uh, with sponsoring all the uh, the motorcyclists and action sports guys, you know, skateboarders and snowboarders. And that's uh, something that Weed Maps has been doing for, for a little while now. And that's awesome. I think it's great to support those guys. Um, I think it's great this weed's going to be as well, too. Um, but I best believe... Um, where was I? Right, the actions, the, right, weed maps, doing the thing. I'm, I'm in California. What do you mean? Where was I? Um, <clears throat> we were talking to, uh, we were talking to some folks here around, trying to get a little bit more information about on some of the new initiatives, uh, including, you know, all those, uh, those, those products. Uh, sorry, those projects we were talking about too. Um, product, project, multitasking. I wish I had my own bake sticker. I'm getting close to needing it. This shit is good. Um, but I will. Uh, at least say that they say the strawberry bubblegum is a sativa strain. Uh, this strain is only known parent as bubblegum. It originates from Afghan... This is what, okay, so this is not a very good description. This is why they say. Uh, it originates from Afghanistan, Colombia, Mexico, and Thailand. That's where it originates. It may taste fruity, spicy, earthy, sour, piney. When smoked, this strain can make you feel euphoric, creative, calm, numbness, appetite, gain, and pain relief. Negative side effects could include slight anxiety and slight dry mouth. I don't really know about that many strains that um, uh, have any negative side effects. I don't think dry mouth is anything that's easily solved by water. Um, <laughs> oh my god. Hang on, wait. wait. Oh my god. <sighs> Save my life. Um, anyway, yes, as we were referring to, as I roll this up and bring in, uh, bring in the next person I want to talk to here, we, uh, we wanted to get a little bit more information about the action sports department and get some folks on motorcycles to come do some jumps through here. I really thought it'd be actually pretty cool. Uh, I didn't really tell them, but I had a guy on a rocket powered, um, skidoo that I brought with me from Canada. He was going to bring his, uh, snowmobile out here uh, with a rocket strapped onto it and we had a ramp we were going to shoot all the way down the front lobby and right in and he was going to do a backflip right into the salad bar. It was going to be good but um, he got stuck at customs. Uh, they wouldn't allow him to bring his husky through customs. Uh, they, you can't travel with, uh, with huskies apparently. Although fi oddly enough Alaskan Malamutes, no problem. Uh, Siberian huskies, you would think with the relationship with Putin and Trump. A anyway, wrong show, wrong time. <laughs> Um, but uh, I did uh, manage to get some uh, a chat with an individual named Eric, uh, who's the uh, who's the action sports director around here, and he told me a little bit about it. But he unfortunately couldn't be here for the day, so I do know somebody in the room here who knows a little bit about this actually. Um, so if uh, if I could, I'm luckily enough a Weed Maps TV executive producer, Madeline Donegan, is here in the room somewhere, and she knows lots about it. So if we can get a mic on her and get her out here for for a little bit of information. She can tell us a little bit more about it. I got a video that I want to play and I want her to introduce it. So um, please welcome Madeline to the show. Hey girl, Hi. how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good, thanks for being here. Nice to see you. It's a pleasure. Thank, first of all, thanks for letting me take over your day and kind of ruin everything else you had planned. It's been a pleasure. This is what we do here in the Weed Maps TV studio. Oh, well, it's great. I we love it. We get high and make videos. I, it's, it's, <laughs> uh, I should have come here sooner. This is fantastic. Yeah, it's uh, I got a little bit more space than I'm used to. I mean, we, we're happy to have the Pot TV Studios at the Cannabis Culture Headquarters Lounge is located 307 West Hastings, of course, in Vancouver. Um, but this is nice. You got like screens and big lights and yeah, all we have, up. We have a pretty nice setup here. Pretty lucky. It's a good and, space. And you, 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 you run the whole thing. Uh, myself with an entire production team and a lot of other people. Yeah, we run Weed Maps TV. It's a pretty big privilege that we all get to come in and do this every day, quite frankly. And that's probably a pretty big to-do list, man. You guys really pound out a hell of a lot of just incredible content these days and well, you know, scaled up. A lot of people smoke marijuana in a lot of industries, so we have got a lot of ground to cover. It's true. It's true. Well, let's cover the uh, the stuff that I wanted to get you in and talk about. Um, we've seen as we were, yeah... Uh, Weeb Maps has some established, uh, you know, surf and skate and moto teams, and but you guys are entering the action sports arena really, I guess, to like help really bring awareness to alternative sports medicine, you know, and healthier, more active, or uh, more effective plant medicines. It's not just about 
skateboarding and getting high, which again, some people enjoy and have fun, but there's a lot more to it. And that's, that's really a lot of the message you're trying to get through with this, right? Certainly. Um, our, our action sports initiative really is focused around well-being and healthy well-being and sports medicine. So what we're, what we're looking at here is kind of taking what we all know is a big part of a lot of different industries, including athleticism, and kind of focusing on the medicinal side of things and supporting our athletes in that way. Um, currently, we do have a surf, skate, and moto team. We are going to be expanding that into a lot of different sports. Um, but right now, our main focus is definitely kind of educating, spreading awareness in terms of this is a plant medicine that can be used for injuries and rehabilitation in a lot of different facets. Sure. And interestingly enough, a lot of our athletes use cannabis for a variety of reasons across the spectrum. And many of them, most of our surfers, in fact, don't use cannabis at all. They use CB, the CBD components of cannabis, sure. the non-psychoactive. No, Non-THC. No, right. Sure, sure. Right. Thank you. Um, and they're using CBD-focused medicines they're for inflammation, for rehabilitation. And then you have those that use cannabis or the THC side of things to alleviate their symptoms. And so we have this broad variety of people that are using this for a variety of different things. Mm -hmm. And we just kind of want to show support and educate and make people aware that this is a holistic medicine. This is something that is very effective and kind of weaning people away from the pharmaceuticals as the go-to for this, these kind of ailments. Well, I mean, Weed Maps' whole sort of mantra, as, as, as Gail explained, was, wow, I want to know where all these are. <laughs> and it's because people want to not have to be hiding under a rock, crawling in some back room, and knocking on a door because you know a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy. Exactly. That's not how weed should be accessible to people. You should be able to go out there and literally be like, I need weed in Irvine, like I did. Right. Uh, uh, and thanks to you guys, I was able to do that, right? And it's, that's what people want, the access and the information. And through these events, you can help raise awareness to these folks who can then obviously help other people understand. Right, exactly. And to your point, there's... Um Accessing marijuana is obviously a massive function of weed maps, but you can also find sure. other things like topicals and cartridges and CBD tablets and anything that a clinic carries. And can, clinics. Right, yeah, and clinics. You can yeah. find via weed maps. So there's really, it's really for everybody. You know, mm -hmm. it's really for the medicinal user, the recreational user. Yeah. And in terms of our action sports, you know, it really is a play on sports medicine. Like we really want to focus on why these athletes should be taken care of in a more in a healthier and more holistic way. Well, there's a better way to do it. We've seen you know, numerous studies talking about how many prescriptions pills could be uh, alleviated from people's, you know, insides. Uh, yeah. So no one has to go through that garbage um, that uh, it's enough to scare the pharmaceutical industries to lobby against the cannabis industry. Right? But again, not, not that, not that shit. Um, <laughs> it is, uh, but no, I mean, it makes a lot of sense that a lot of people these days are now trying to get a more a holistic approach to their life, a healthier approach. And cannabis, we've seen time and time again, is working for a lot of people across the board, including a lot of athletes. We'll talk about a story in the news section coming up. Absolutely. And there's a lot of um, different industries within the realm of sports that are starting to acknowledge this, you know, mm -hmm. there's or, or making the rules a little bit more lenient. And action sports is really no different in terms of these are athletes that exercise and practice their discipline extensively that have ailments that get hurt, that have rehabilitation during and after they finish right. the sport. And so cannabis being non-addictive and natural, right. it's, it's, it should be the go-to. And so that's kind of right. what we're doing is supporting these athletes and giving them a safe place to acknowledge that this is an okay way to treat yourself within athleticism. And you said, we had a story just last week on uh, how the Nevada State Athletic Commission is looking at uh, their stance a little, potentially softening their stance a little bit on cannabis as well too for some of their athletes. So again, you know, the MMA uh, uh, fighters out there, uh, they a lot of those folks, we see of course uh, Nate Diaz and Nick Diaz, the, the Diaz brothers notoriously uh, known for the, the consumption of CBDs right after. And I, I think that's a good thing. I think it's because of people's lack of understanding and knowledge about how good these products are. And it's not about getting high, it's about getting healthy. And right. why shouldn't you be allowed to access that? And I think that the more understanding, the more information you can get at places like we met, <laughs> uh, you, uh, uh, you can help sort of break through some of those stereotypes and barriers, right? Right. And, you know, as the industry leader, we take that very seriously as a responsibility for us to, um, 
you know, shed some light on that, educate people, and support the communities in which, across the board, are utilizing cannabis for medicinal reasons, rehabilitation, and for recreational. Well, and even beyond that, so you do these big events and you take them to communities and you employ people, you, uh, you know, educate folks on a healthier lifestyle, you bring a lot of money to the community, uh, you know, the tourist dollars, all the stuff right. that comes with it, I mean, to support the whole organization, it's... These are big deals. I uh, we know in, from previous shows with people who watch me. I do events, and we bring a lot of money to an area when you come in for an event, right? Definitely. And that's and that's a great thing for the community as well too. It's not just about those who consume, because as you said, even a lot of people don't actually. So uh, even on your own teams. But speaking of your teams, we have some of the uh, the videos and stuff. We actually have uh, one looking about some stuff that uh, happened in Hawaii at the Pipe House. Uh, what was that a little bit about? Um, you know, that was a really, really great endeavor that we did, and essentially our action sports director, Eric Sorensen, he, um, <laughs> he facilitated this week of health and well-being um, for all of our Weed Maps team athletes, surf, skate, moto, where they could take spend a week and truly nourish and replenish and rejuvenate themselves through all every meal was um, all organic non-gmo locally grown food mm -hmm. um, yoga sessions in the morning massages in the evening um, definitely definitely a lot of you know practicing their specific discipline sure. or their sport and everything was intended to a support the athletes in their in the healthiest way we could and kind of push that initiative and acknowledge that like we understand what they go through and what their bodies go through every day and just rejuvenate exactly and yeah. giving them that space to do that and secondary to support the local community everything that we did at the pipe house experience was was locally driven and mm. we supported the community in that way and that's a very important aspect of not just our industry in marijuana but in these sports communities is that community and that your fanship and your and not being an impediment the places that you go but in fact contributing mm -hmm. and so that's what the pipe house experience was it was pretty incredible and i'd love to take a look at that video let's do it then we gotta scroll scroll find it here somewhere i had to kind of compress everything into one screen here today at the last minute but it's done here it is okay y'all watch this this one's actually kind of cool i like it uh shouts on the production value to your team here y'all did it good mm -hmm. Slick, mmm, greasy, mmm, I like it. Ooh, that was good. Nicely done. Oh, thank Shows you. It was team. a good time. Yeah, right. Now that looked awesome. So for more on that, uh, you can actually follow WM Skate at WMSK8 uh, and uh, WM Surfing on Instagram for more of the Weed Maps uh, action sports skate and surfing specifics. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And on our, um, we have an incredible skate team and an incredible surf team um, and moto. And so check that out. It's get live up updates. They're always they're always contributing to that and uh Give us your feedback. Uh, that'd be great. Yeah, you guys appreciate that. That's one cool thing about the Weed Maps uh, app and website. You can give everybody who uses it your feedback. Go in there, give them a rating. What I really like is the first place I went into to, uh, the other day was a recreational shop. And one of the first things I saw when I walked in was, make sure you go rate us on, on Weed Maps. So there you go. We want to know what you think. Thing. Yeah, right? And that's, and that's good. I mean, we like to know. And that's why we have the chat room. Shout out to everybody in the chat who's hanging in there. We doing okay, guys? I mean, this is, this is working out so far so good i haven't seen any real problems i got a few people monitoring it we're trying to make uh trying to make this <laughs> one go well but uh all thumbs up i hope um while we've got you here um you also uh there's another topic i wanted to touch on while i've got you it's someone to speak with um the esports uh project that you guys are working with as well now too now let's face it esports gaming however people want to describe it it's not it's not just now 
Let's face it, it's a far from a bunch of dudes sitting in their basement who were still 40s, playing video games, uh, eating Doritos, and having their mom yell at them. It's not the stereotype stoner stuff anymore. It's far past no, that. So It is far past that. And they've got big conferences and big events, and, and, and it's on some global scale. I mean, eSports and gaming is a massive, massive industry now, and there's been some huge events that have gone down. Um, but you want to scroll back a little bit. Um, weed and video games, let's face it, go together like peanut butter and jelly. Yes. And ain't, ain't nobody's going to lie that since the beginning, right? I mean, people have been together on, on that front. Right. A large, a large demographic, I think, of the gaming community, along with, you know, the sports community, the music community, and, sure. and a lot of other communities, yeah. um, have been, yeah, marijuana has been a large part of, of these industries. And gaming in particular, it's... It's been very prevalent, but it's also been very hidden and something that hasn't been quite acceptable for people to acknowledge that they do. Right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's, if you will, the green curtain that you want to kind of help pull back from right. uh, for folks. Uh, there's a lot of, again, misconceptions. You know, what are you going to do? I'm going to sit home and play video games and do nothing. But I know some very, very creative and successful and, and talented people who go home for a minute, sit down, smoke a joint, play some video games for a second to kind of unwind after a hard fucking day, then make dinner, then do all the rest of their stuff, and then go to bed and get up and do it all over again. And there's right. not a goddamn thing wrong with that. No, not at all. And then to the level to see it where these guys are now, I mean, you people competitive video game players sponsored by events featuring, hosted on one world, you know, a high level world class sort of events that have been going on for a while, but now with the online community that's really come on and the, the uh, integration of, you know, the online gaming where, where folks can, you know, obviously the Xboxes and the PlayStation communities and much bigger than that. Across the board, I mean, there's been these smash events. I'm not super familiar with all of the ones that go down, but but I've heard some, you know, some of the crazy stories that come along with with the, the scope of these events. And when you really see it and understand it, it makes sense why you guys want to be a part of it. Well, definitely. And you know, us getting into this industry or having our Weed Maps gaming team isn't just a new chapter for Weed Maps. It's a new chapter for the gaming industry overall. Um, by offering teams and brands an open and safe platform to support marijuana, then we're like, as you said, kind of pulling back that green curtain. Yeah. And it has played such a crucial role for so many for so long. And like I said, I feel like it's our responsibility at a certain point to support these people and acknowledge that, you know, as creatives, which I understand and connect to, yeah. marijuana has always been a significant part of my process and my creativity. Okay. And there's nothing lazy about that, at least in my experience. And so I feel like this, all the initiatives about yeah. action sports and gaming and just overall through Weed Maps and personally supporting anybody using plant medicine or yeah. using holistic medicines to be able to do their craft, to better their craft, to heal themselves no, physically no, no, or no, mentally. No, no, I don't think that there is anything wrong with yeah. that. And I don't think a lot of other people do either. Right. And so that's why it's so important mm -hmm. for us to be supporting these initiatives and kind of getting the word out there and, and giving people a place where they don't have to feel shameful about some of the things that they do and recognize there's nothing to be ashamed of. Plus, let's face it, you sit down, some folks, when they play video games, it helps them concentrate or get focused or get in the game. I've played a lot of a lot of games myself. My, see, my day was Gran, Gran Turismo. The very, very first time I rented that game from Blockbuster back in like... 97. <laughs> that wasn't yeah. going yeah. yeah, I rented it from Blockbuster back in like 97 <laughs> or something like that, or 95. One of the first times when it first came out, and sure enough, I sat there from 7 o'clock at night, we went through to 7 o'clock in the morning. Me and this guy, Trevor, sat over on the couch, on the other, this couch over here, I was over this couch there, and I just. Yeah. Game, 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 game. And that was my game forever. And my thumb would get sore as fuck. And sometimes I would get all sore on my back because I'd be sitting there doing the hunch and all that. I mean, let's face it, there is, again, some level of health like you can cross over with, with the sure. action sport the athletes in the way to be able to help take care of yourself a little bit, right? And also use it, as you say, creatively or for focus. So. Absolutely. There's just a slew of mental and physical things that marijuana addresses in a way that other things don't. And I think that that's, a, you know, our biggest initiative here is to educate, to inform, to spread awareness, and to support people within this industry. And um, as individuals, consumers, users, people that are in it, you know, entrepreneurs actually within this industry, our job, our, uh, what we do here is we support that and we try to push that movement forward. And so the last event you guys were pushing forward was, uh, was pretty cool. I have a video of that one as well too. Can you, oh, click that already. Can you tell us a little bit about, uh, the, the last, uh, 
uh, what we're going to see here uh, from Vish and uh, Vicious Vish. Um, yeah, this was a, I believe the video you're about to pull mm -hmm. up is a recap from a Smash Brothers um, event that we did. We send, you know, some of our videographers with Cody Dragon, who is the Ga Weed Maps gaming director, right. who's very, very involved in the industry and has been for a long time. So he, you know, takes us out to these events and we get coverage and sponsor athletes and, you know, we're moving forward. Nice. Check it out. Let's uh, see. This one looks pretty good, too. Uh, oddly enough, his Weed Maps <laughs> TV video is starting to have a theme to it. You guys want to see this. Uh, click it. Click it. Oh, wait. No, that's not the right one. Click this one. Yeah, it's too much to click. Vicious Vish here with Weed Maps Gaming. Welcome to the University of Washington. Let me take you inside to the world of Don't Park on the Grass. Washington's largest Super Smash Brothers tournament. We have two gods here. We got Leffen, we got Hungrybox, and a slew of other top players. We've got people coming from Sweden, Germany. I think this is the most international tournament in a while that isn't a major, so that's actually really nice for our community. With Melee, I feel like it's such a tapestry of different like emotions and skill levels and experiences and everything. Like the people you meet are just like one of the best things ever. Uh, that was dope. That was dope. Really slick. Uh, I like what you guys do. Um, I appreciate good production value. Um, so that's cool. You guys can find more information of that, of course, through there will be social and a little bit more on the web stuff, from what I understand, coming very soon, supporting yes. some of these more projects. Um, but for right now, you can check, of course, all that stuff through weedmaps.com. Uh, you can find all the info you need to, and there is the videos as well too on Weed Maps TV, which you can find on the YouTubes, which looks like, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, there it is, <laughs> there it is, all those wonderful videos are all right in here, right there, one of them is actually I think probably where I got that from, um, but yeah, go on out and support all the hard work of these folks who put in countless hours and effort. I don't even want to talk about time what time we were emailing until last night. Oh, I know. This is, it takes a lot to get this together, especially a live production, which is why I'm a little nervous being called out here like this. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry about your nerves, and I'm sorry for calling you out, and I'm sorry, you know, to just kind of put in the spot and take over your whole thing. But there's also another thing. I mean, so you're the executive producer of uh, Weed Maps TV, and, yes, and we're here, we're live on Pot TV in the Weed T Maps TV studio, and thus far... None of you fucking people from Weed Maps will smoke weed with me. We're, we're all on TVs. I know, and they got. I'm just kidding. I'm not on a TV. Uh, you gonna pass that? Yeah. <laughs> Finally, someone from Weed Maps will smoke a joint with me. Hey. Uh, leave it to the ladies. They always do it best. And thanks for stepping up. No, now that the interview kind of portion is all that stuff is over. I want to know too. How? Okay. So now you're the boss of Weed Maps TV. <laughs> Where did, uh, where did, for, all, for, for my intensive purposes, for the show at the moment, um, and you're uh, smoking weed here, having a good time, but how did you, well, I've got you, I'm going to ask you the same questions because I can at the moment. Oh. Um, why not? Because why not? I can make it up on the fly. How when did you get into weed there, Miss Madeline? Um, like most people, I think I dabbled quite a bit in high school, a little heavier in college, and then, um, but it wasn't until I was in my mid-20s that I really started smoking heavily. I, uh, was really sick for the majority of my early 20s that kind of consumed that part of my life and unfortunately weed was never something that was considered or given to me as a form of medicine so when i kind of escaped and saw it got to the other side of all those health issues i started utilizing marijuana a little bit more recreationally and found it to be an imperative part of my life for medicinal and recreational purposes and ever since then i've been smoking pretty regularly smoking that bank mm -hmm. i like it i like your style well that's cool you uh you guys got some nice products in your little Candyland room there i wouldn't mind taking a look at those also oh i wanted to see this one yeah that's what i thought is this is the clementine <laughs> i've never even heard of this one before but i want to put that in the bud cam um while i'm doing that because i'm gonna roll up for the news yet you smell that one yet yeah that's nice yeah that's nice right I'm going to jump over the bud cam, throw one in there, but we can move on forward. Um, can I ask, how, how long have you been with Maps? How did you get connected to this fine establishment? When we've heard from everybody else's story, what's your deal? 
Can um, I ask that? Yeah, I've been here a little bit, a little over a year, almost a year and a half. And, um, you know, I just went to a cannabis event. I met some people. We got connected. I came in and it was a fit for me right away. It's pretty easy, pretty seamless. And um, this was an industry that I was already extremely passionate about getting into because of my experience with my health stuff and my being appalled that marijuana was never a suggested alternative for medication. So I became very interested and very passionate about it. And this was the perfect fit. There so, you go. Yeah, works nice. pretty well. That works out pretty good. It's funny. Uh, weed has a funny way of just working its magic sometimes. It's just going to kind of do what it's going to do, depending on who you ask. There's a couple hippies that I know up in Vancouver just be like, bruh, it's just weed's going to just make it happen, bro. She's just, you know, that's what she does. It is what she does. <laughs> and, and speaking of it, ladies doing it well down here at Weed Maps, man. You know, I uh, I like to see how the cannabis industry, uh, you uh, you gals are kick, killing it in the game out here right now. Everywhere I go, um, I'm happy to see uh, the scales tipping uh, outside of the conventional business model, right? Definitely. So, it's uh, great that we have a... You know, a lot of women here at Weed Maps and yeah. in the marijuana industry overall, it is it has a very, very high percentage of females in predominant positions. I and was just going to say, yeah, especially in high level roles, it, too, it not just in working there, For but sure. at, the, at, the, at the highest of levels. So you know, we like to get high, too, man. Yeah, and right? that's something that for a long time, I feel like women have been kind of ashamed of um, or been made to be ashamed of. And at yeah. this point in our, it, you know, I'm I'm a proud stoner and I yeah. and I feel like there's a lot of women out there that are as well and that's something at this point we don't have to hide about anymore and so you're seeing all these women come out and these talented amazing intellectual women and they're running the show in a lot of the marijuana space and it's pretty great and inspiring to see well i think what's really cool you know of course shows to ladies but it's the change in the marijuana space a little bit period because what we're seeing is you got some people who who are really unbelievably talented and master growers and they could some, un, some smart fucking weed nerds who can make some crazy stupid next level shit who have nothing more than a backyard education for sure and all this yellow level of experience and handed down from generations or whatever that that you can't learn in school and no. you know i'm sure that some of the folks from weed maps here and i'm trying to call any employees or whatever but i know you've got a diverse across from a uh, selection from across the board but i mean you have to know and love and care about weed to really be in and pushing it and be passionate about it so i mean okay. i uh, i think that the next question then comes so so to me is preferred method of smoking you know that's a hard one depending on the time of day where i'm at and what i'm doing but um I most commonly smoke dab or take dabs. Yep. That is my preferred method simply because it gives me a balance of functionality and yeah. euphoria at the same time yeah. um, in a way that isn't as heady sometimes with flour. Yeah. So if I'm trying to be functional or working or doing anything creative, I typically lean more towards dabbing. But when I get home at night, man, I roll a joint and that's the way that I disconnect and digress for my day. So. That's a hard question. <laughs> I, I, uh, you know, I, I agree. A lot of people like dabs. I have a friend of mine. He's like, I like to get high, and I like it to be good and still functional. He's like, dabs are so much quicker to me. Right. He's like, flowers, I don't have 20 minutes to sit down and smoke a joint. And I got things to do. I can just take a little dab over here. Come back, right. Take a dab and it's, you know, and it's a different feeling. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it varies person to person. But And strain to strain, but of course, yeah. Yeah, for sure. But for me, um, dabbing balances with me a little bit easier and when I'm trying to be functional and yeah. that's and that's what it is so if I'm being active at all I prefer to dab but I also have kind of a high energy level overall so high sometimes I need hey. to smoke a joint when I get home to really actually disconnect and kind of digress so uh-huh sometimes I have to do the same thing after a show okay now I need to smoke a joint that's a ritualistic thing for yeah. me is like getting home from my day rolling up a joint and smoking it it's pretty great there you go uh, I was gonna ask so uh, I got one in the in the chat room here um, do you guys have a dab bar here at weed maps we have a lot of dab stuff here let me think of how to answer this yeah we have um multiple places for dabbing here yes um any events that we do in-house we've had dab bars our, you know, our christmas party had a dab uh, bar. i had i had a i had a question from did thurgood ever try and break in here from i think from from uh i think that's a reference to dave Chappelle in oh. the uh <laughs> in in the uh, movie half baked where he called through the building trying to get the room full of weed they didn't really have a room full of weed like that level but they did have a whole bunch of different products 
Like literally, there was shelves and shelves of all this super cool stuff from I don't even know what this is either. Like tacos, I no. What Dab Dabalada. Dabalada. <laughs> Dab chiladas. Dab chilada. A gram, I believe a gram of shatter in there. Oh my goodness. Just add your favorite beer or juice and cannabis infused drink mix. Oh my God. That's awesome. Um, what else is there? These cherry poppers or some killer looking macadamia nut cookies. Um, some heavy hitting oils and pens from all sorts of folks. Even I could use a sip of this vibe. Ooh, relaxing formulation of tea, CBD and terpenes. Ooh. That sounds pretty tasty. A bunch of product. <laughs> uh, sounds kind of tasty, actually. I'm a little thirsty as I get into. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, what else you got? Oh, there's some cream I can put on my feet afterwards because you know running around all day. I like that. This red relief, red feather relief cream. Nice. I like that. And then, man, there's some medtainers in here. Shouts to medtainer. Actually, shouts to medtainer. Now that I think about it, and shouts to Johnny B for infiltrating all the way down here. Here's the respect that our man 420 Weedmaster, the Friday co-host of uh, Pot TV's uh, Cannabis Culture News, we were walking around through the med through the Weed Maps offices here, and uh, we're walking by the beautiful buffet because lunch is always awesome around this place. And uh, <laughs> and in walks uh, a, just a, a plethora of dudes with boxes and boxes of medtainers, and I'm like, oh my god, check the medtainers. And uh, I said, where's Johnny B when you need him? And the guy goes, Johnny B, that's our Canadian rep. And I said, yeah, I know. He's the Friday co-host of the show that I'm on the Thursday co-host. And he's like, oh, shit. And we said, oh, shit. And anyway, they whap, 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 whap. Pulled out boxes and boxes of Weed Maps medtainers. So shouts to uh, Medtainer and Medtainer Canada. Shouts to Johnny B. Shouts to everybody for doing it. And thanks for you guys for hooking me up with one. There's a little souvenir. That's cool, bro. Um, so many products. You guys, of course, work with a lot of amazing brands. And... Um, a lot of amazing, like you said, not just dispensaries, not just clinics, just it's everything from the spectrum. And uh, it's cool that you guys obviously, because of that, get to look at a lot of fine products from a lot of fine people that are in here. Um, can I take some of this home with me? We'll talk about it. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> Let's do the security. So what I get with the security. This thing is super cool. This Ego IO thingy is like... So I've got 2,000 milligrams of liquid shatter in this super gnarly vape pen. I eyeballed this one earlier before. Look at this son bitch. This thing is cool as all get out. I wish I could take that across the border. I might have to do a, like a insane amount of inhaling on this tonight. But this is like a heavy duty unit. Yeah, no doubt. Be uh, careful with them. Right? This is this is crazy. I uh, is it on? Testing, testing. It scared me. It tried to bite me. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I'm okay right now. <laughs> Thanks. It like growls. It's awesome. <laughs> Man, this is fantastic. I can't believe it. So much things to see, so much things to see and do. I appreciate you guys having me. I know you got to get back to running on the show here. Uh, yeah, I could spend all day looking at this stuff, but yeah, seriously, I got to get on to the news. I do appreciate sure. you coming through. We Anything we missed? Anything I forgot to plug? I think we covered it all. We appreciate you being here and... We'd love to see your studio someday. Yeah, come on through. We Come on up to Pot TV. We'll have you guys back through. Uh, we'll do a cross-collaboration. Plus, of course, the New Cannabis Life Network studio is opening up in Victoria soon. Stay tuned for more on that. Of course, you guys see me messing with them, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, I'd love to have you, and I'd love to be back. Thank you so much for being so accommodating Thank to let you. us come through. Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, you're the best. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Madeline, executive Thank producer you. of Map TV. Check her out. Check it. Oh, but wait, wait, wait. I forgot one more question. Oh, we sorry. Ah, I forgot the other two. <laughs> While you're here, ah, how much and often do you smoke all day, every day, sometimes? What's um, I usually take I you know, take two dabs a day and smoke two joints a day. That's and, my after work ritual. And sorry, you guys. Thanks for catching that in the chat room. Uh, most memorable bag ever. The one that got away. Your favorite. Oh my god, I wish I could get that again sometime because it um, was. To Gil's point earlier, I typically can get um, my favorite strains at this yeah. point, but my currently right now what I. What I'm usually looking for is actually the nameless genetics mega wellness. 
That is, Ooh. that's the one that we don't have featured here today with you. Oh, I think I gave you a little bit for you to You mean try. this one that I saw sitting on the corner of your desk and I snuck when you were not looking? Fair enough. <laughs> and it's, it's worth a try. It was worth the theft. <laughs> but yeah, that's my... That's my favorite string. Yeah, well, for sure. appreciate that. I get it. I might have to check this out. We want to thank very much for them and for you. And sorry to grab you and no go. No worries. I appreciate it. She's got to get back to running the show, guys. She's got people standing around waiting for her. Thank huh? you. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, okay. So, right. Next. <laughs> Table full of stuff. Shit in the way, getting high and tripping out, having so much fun. It's like Christmas, there's almost crap around here. The camera angle, you can't really see all the mess on my desk, but it's intense. I'm telling you right now, there's a lot of shit going on down here. I can't believe they got some tabachalada. <laughs> That's awesome. Awesome. This whole experience has just been fantastic. What a day, what a couple of days, man. Thanks very much for having me out here, guys. This has been amazing. Uh, on to the news. Uh, world's first meter dose marijuana inhaler is uh, in use in Israel. That's kind of interesting. Uh, according to the Office of Na National Drug Policy, um, well, they're going on through different things. But, uh, they're looking at the possibilities uh, in a few different places uh, to, to try and use inhalers for uh, cannabis, uh, various different products, of course. But Israel's Ministry of Health approved the inhaler um, and has been in use for a year at a particular center in Haifa, I believe. Uh, it's a standard medical treatment. They're completing clinical trials demonstrating the inhaler's precision and compliance with pharmaceutical standards. In addition, the medical technology uh, modifies the physical structure of the plant. It goes on with a bunch of science -y shit. But there's a cool new unit coming out that that's starting to work on. So I don't know. I can meter my dose pretty well. I think, well, this is how I meter my dose. This is complicated. I don't have a high-tech device. I do have a, I have a lighter. There's one. There's two. There's three. I'll lose track eventually, but it's how many can you get to a Tootsie Pop, I think was the, if you're old enough. Um, maybe you get it, maybe you don't. Uh, let me see, what is kind of cool, this is neat coming up, could uh, marijuana chewing gum uh, help make uh, IBS sim symptoms more a, uh, bearable, if you will? Um, the, uh, there's a Dutch research organization that is working on a cannabis gum that uh, is believed that could help cure irritable bowel syndromes, which uh, more than three and a half million Americans struggle with every year. Um, I, uh, it's a CBD enhanced uh, gum, could ease spasms, as what they're saying, and bloating. So that's kind of a neat thing, chewing gum, high in CBD, for those folks as we were sort of talking with earlier, not everyone wants to really get high off it, they just want to get better. That would be a pretty good effective delivery method. I think that could be kind of cool because you, you need a sustained effect really to absorb it. Well, there are other companies, of course, that can give you intense doses, but so when you get a high dose at once is where it doesn't really all you know, process it off. You get that time release and long sort of delay at it. It's not about taking a big fat bong toke and getting it all at once. You get high, but then you're one another one later. If you smoke that same amount of weed in a long joint for a duration, you get higher for longer. But, yeah. So that's kind of neat. I thought that was kind of a science advancey type of thing, thing going on there. Um, and what else? Boom. Uh, medical cannabis could be made free of charge in uh, Ireland. Uh, they're looking at a report. Uh, health community has made several recommendations after. Um, <laughs> uh, health committee uh, in Ireland made a recommendation that medical cannabis be paid for by the state and that pending approval from health care authorities, it should be made available to patients as soon as possible. Pending the approval, the committee has recommended that certain cannabinoid products uh, such as Charlotte's Web and others uh, be made available as speedily and cost effectively as possible. Um, they can't. They need to obviously uh, get it through doctors and health approved authorities that they go on to talk about longer here in a complex solution, but it includes potential to make them free of charge as part of a long-term illness scheme plan uh, to reduce onerous and prohibited cost burden on families they're looking on. So good of them to take that approach. That's the better way to do it as forcing people to have to, you know, pay fees just to, you know, when they can take they get their medicine or pills from some company paid for by health insurance and shit. I mean, they can get it for free depending on your insurance. Anyway, 
moving forward. Uh, Hawaii dispensaries. This is kind of cool. Uh, shouts to my homeboy, Devin. Uh, thanks for helping put this together, homie. Uh, Hawaii dispensaries can start growing medical marijuana pretty soon. They, we've known that Hawaii is getting closer and closer to making uh, weed more and more available to folks. Um, and as the story loads, you know, it always takes a while. It's still many months before the product will be for sale, but the state has reached a milestone that will lead to, that led to, uh, to planting. Hawaii residents who have been waiting 16 years for a legal place to buy medical marijuana will have to wait a couple more months, but as of next week, their medicine can start, can start growing. The State Department of Health said Tuesday it's ready to connect a seed to sale tracking software with the programs used by the eight companies that receive licenses to grow and sell medical marijuana. It plans to do so February 1st. So milestone that allow most licensees to start cultivating cannabis. Um, it's got to be tracked along the whole way and government monitored. But the first seeds are being sown in um, Hawaii, so that's all right. And uh, medical marijuana dispensary opens in Tampa. So I believe this was uh, Tampa's first full-scale medical marijuana dispensary opens Thursday at 8701 Northdale Marbury Highway Carol whatever that goes on and on uh, place down in Tampa point is I think it's the first one about it not everyone can just walk in you got to get medical permission but they are the first full-scale airs that and then a little nod to the homeboy Tim McBride in Florida who yes it's two weeks since the last time he was on so we should cut to Tim's tales but they're hard to do on the live location so he'll be back on next week uh, so that's all right um, but yes, stay tuned for more from the Saltwater Cowboy. And if you're in Tampa, you can start looking at more access to getting some weed. So that's kind of cool. Um, the next, next. Uh, if you were in Colorado, uh, there was a recall due to pesticide residue in Colorado. We talked about one in Canada. Not really calling anybody out, but just an, an awareness for you if you didn't know. According to the Department of Denver of Health, there was uh, a place for Green Man Cannabis who's done a voluntary recall. For more information, you can um, uh, recall greenmancannabis.com if you've got anything from them in which batch. But there was a, a problem with one of the products that they used. So if you've got anything from them within the last six months, uh, if you're in that area, go ahead and check them out if you're in Denver. You might might just want to be safe. Uh, it sound, they sound like they've got everything pretty much under control, but just a little heads up. We gave you one last week as well, too, on some stuff in Canada um, that was a little bit more severe of a reason. Um, but that's, that's a Health Canada issue, and we'll talk about that when we get home. Uh, also, Georgia, uh, Georgia changed their laws on cannabis use which was kind of cool. Uh, relaxation of rules on possession, campaigners await judgment uh, for cultivation anyway. But until recently, anyone caught with cannabis twice in 12 months in Georgia faced 14 years behind bar. As bars, as of Tuesday, you can carry more than 200 joints after constitutional court, uh, in effect, decriminalized possession of the drug. So um, it goes on to a reason why, and it's basically because of somebody else's case that has now set a precedent uh, that I'm not going to go and describe the whole thing. But you're getting closer and closer to the point of being able to handle um, yeah, about 100 grams, almost a quarter pound. So that's cool. It's a step in the right direction. And as we were talking... Um, earlier about the action sports side of things here and i mentioned uh, nfl nfl players association to propose less punitive approach to marijuana which is a good call because these guys are big dudes and they go beat the shit out of each other night after night after night after night and it is uh it's hard on the body and not everyone wants to take pills and either a get addicted by pills or b have Rot, their guts rotting from medications like that. So sometimes they found that cannabis and uh, its various different components can be very effective for them. So why should these guys not be allowed to try that too? You know, um, uh, but the National Football League punishes its players for using marijuana in a much harsher way than they punish players for just about everything else is part of the article and part of the reasoning behind this. We've seen uh, other uh, drug infractions be handled differently. We've seen um, other conduct unbecoming players in that uh, in that league that uh, we've all seen across the news but somebody gets caught with a fucking gram of weed in their pocket and all shit breaks loose so hopefully the NFL will start to make that uh, leaders of the NFL Players Association are preparing a proposal that would amend the sports drug policies to take a less punitive approach to dealing with recreational marijuana use by players according to the union executive director the proposal will be presented to unions board of player representatives uh, if it's approved by 
those players. Smith said the proposal will be made to the league. The NFL would have to agree to any changes, of course, uh, which is negotiated jointly, administered by the league's players and unions. So I hope that works out, man, because why not? I don't, you know, I don't think at that point a lot of those dudes are just doing it to get high because they just want to get high. I think a lot of those guys could really use that stuff, and I think it would help make their careers better, uh, longer, and I think they would suffer from a lot less of problems. We've seen how cannabis can help with concussions, and there's a lot of reasons to it. So I think that that's a really good step in the right direction from the NFL. Uh, also, moving forward, of course, in the updates, there's always things on the go with us abroad and at home, and well, even though we're not at home, it's kind of like we're at home. This has been fun today. Um, again, shouts to everyone for having us here. This has been awesome. Uh, sorry to hijack you before Madeline. But I needed someone to come talk to. Um, in the news, uh, this week, we had an article from Andrew Fleming, a new expert correspondent uh, of ours, if you will. Actually, he works with Cannabis Life Network, and he did an article that uh, we ran a little bit to do with uh, uh, my excellent adventure down at the Emerald Cup 2016 uh, last month. That was a lot of fun. Thanks to Andrew for well put together and Brad and Rusty and uh, Todd and everybody who put in all the hard work to make that happen. Uh, that was dope. Uh, you've seen me posting all over social to it, of course. So you uh, you want to see a little snippet? I'm not going to play the whole thing because it's like 10 minutes and shit. But plus, you go to the website and see more. But hang on, check this out for a second. In case you haven't seen this post, well, check this. Uh, clicking, 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 click. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's me, Craig X, aka the expert of expert joints. I'm here with the Cannabis Life Network guys, and we are at the Emerald Cup 2016 here in Northern California. We're at the Sonoma County Fairgrounds with tens of thousands of people, bounds and bounds of Mary Joannas, and it is going to be a great show. This is one of the biggest and baddest North American weed events there is. We're going to catch it only on Cannabis Life Network. Huh? Right? There you go. So that's fun. Go watch the rest of it. It's like 10 minutes long and shit like that. I don't want to run it now, man. We got to let these people get back to work at some point. We've been here enough. Um, this uh, next week, next week on the shoe, on the really big shoe, uh, the can of Bake Box. Uh, we're going to be talking to Lane from there and checking out some products from them, as well as smoking on some weed from Temple of Calyx. If it all goes according to plan, it might be Temple Month. Mm -hmm. That could be a lot of fun. Uh, Toke up to next week, of course. Uh, this week was a lot of fun. Um, I want to thank Gil and Jeremy and Madeline and Weed Maps and Jack and Devin and, and everybody who's helped put this on. This has been a lot of fun. Um, I want to also shout out uh, as well to to Trevor up in Canada as well. I uh, I've had a great time here. I appreciate uh, you guys opening up your doors to us to let us come on in here and uh, run rampant through your hallways. It has been an absolute pleasure to be here and. Uh, I look forward to the opportunity to come back. Uh, if you guys will have me, of course, that is. Um, I would appreciate coming back here. This has been a lot of fun. Um, of course, uh, make sure you check them out. Oddly enough, hit to the credits. Boom. Uh, weedmaps.com. Uh, at Weedmaps across Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. You can type in Weedmaps TV, but as he said, it puts you a different screen. But you can still search it for that. Um, and then, of course, Gil's is Nug Porn 420. There was also WMSK8 and WM Surfing, I think. Yes, were the late ads that I didn't get to throw on there. Of course, check me out at expertjoints.com and at Expert Joints across all the social medias. Uh, sponsors, they're not here this week, but shout out to Weed Map this week. Boom, check the logo, do anything. They make you smile. That's nice, man. I got a smile on my face right now. I can't, I can't even front. And Sunday. Yes, Sunday as well, too. We got the big update on Sunday. Let me... Hmm? Yes, I know. Um, thank you. Let me. Uh, that was the one logo I forgot to drop in, but I got it right here because I got it like that. Boom! The Method Man and Red Man Canadian Fire Bowl. I am doing that on Sunday. We are going to go uh, hand out the trophies for the Canadian Fire Bowl. If you saw my Instagram, you saw me and Dabber Man uh, checking out 23 dabs each and eight joints between eight king size joints between us in four hours 
Uh, we did some live feeds of that. Shouts to Dabber Man, man. Go check him out, dabber.man on Instagram. Um, but yes, that was all for the Canadian Fire Bowl judges kit that is brought to us by the fine folks at Miss Envy. Uh, shouts to Miss and Mr. Envy for putting on the event and being just good folks all around. Uh, appreciate you guys. Oh, there's the logo that you can't see now because I put in the wrong one. But um, it is uh, going down Sunday at Fortune Sound Club in Vancouver, back up home there north of the border. Uh, uh, we will be seeing you there. We're going to be handing out the trophies to that event. That's going to be a lot of fun. I uh, can't wait to do, make that happen. That will be, uh, I think, handing out five different uh, categories. And um, it uh, can't wait. Can't wait to make that happen. So shouts to them. If you, I think there still might be one or two judges tickets left, the last I heard. Uh, if you don't have them already, you can pick up your judges kit at 512 Beatty Street in Vancouver. Um, we'll come out Sunday night, Fortune Sound Club down on Pender. Method Man and Red Man are going to be performing after I hand out all the trophies. Uh, full, full show, good times, uh, don't miss it. And of course, we're going to cover it to some degree and show you some videos. Hopefully get an interview with them. But we'll see how it goes. Uh, that's it. I forget anything else. Ladies and gentlemen, shouts. Shouts to the chat room. Al Robinson, C. Ray, chilling like a villain. Silver Lake, everybody doing. I saw Isabel in there. I think you guys, thanks for tuning in with me. What's up, Facebook? Everybody make it happen. What's up, Pablo? What's up, Giuliani? What's up, Nana? What's up, Perry? Thank you very much. It's been appreciated. Uh, all your support, and it's been appreciated. The hospitality here. We will return it anytime you guys come north of the border. Uh, see you all next week back home. Okay. Uh, all I got left to say is hit the music. Ha <laughs> ha.